I'm Dr. Jacob Gooden, and in this video, I'll show you how to calculate correlation coefficients in three different ways in Excel. Now, the first way will be the hard way using the machine formula, essentially the formula that's coded into all of the stats programs that you'll ever use, and we'll go step by step through the actual formula for the Pearson R correlation coefficient. Number two is to use the Corel function that Excel has written into it. Very easy. And then Method three is to use the data analysis tool pack. Okay, so stick around to the end and you will know three ways for calculating the correlation coefficient. All right, here is the data set that we are looking at and you can download this file from the link in the description. Go ahead and download it, open it up in Excel and follow along with me. Okay, so we are here in the data set and this is a set of data that we have looked at before. We have three variables sprint time, jump height, and peak force from, let's see, 47 athletes. So if you know anything about these measures, then you know that we'll probably get at least one positive correlation and probably two negative correlations because sprint time is a measurement of, of how fast or how much time it takes you to complete a certain distance. And so the faster sprinters will have smaller numbers for their time in seconds. And then if those people are faster, they probably will also jump high because we know that the same underlying mechanisms are supporting both of those. But the jump height is measured um, by a number that's ascending, the better you are at jumping. So that will be a bigger number. And then peak force, which is measured in this case through an isometric mint dipole, those numbers, the higher, the better as well. So let's go ahead and get to calculating them. So here is the machine formula for calculating the Pearson R correlation coefficient. We need deviations from the mean for each score, and then we will take the product of those over the square of those uh, all summed up, and then the square root of, of those sums. Okay, so let's calculate those deviations for X and for Y, and then square them. So we'll type equals, and grab the score, minus the average of this range and I will click option F4, oops, function F4 on a Mac to lock that in place. So we just want a dollar sign before the row and column so that that's locked in place when I drag it down. Double click, there we go. And then we'll grab this and square it. So equals, then reference that cell, type the, the caret or the hat key and then two for squared. Double click the bottom right corner and now we have the squared deviations for X and we'll do the same thing for Y. We'll just repeat that with Y. Okay, for the product of the X and Y deviations, we just have to grab the X deviation and multiply it by the Y deviation. And double click the bottom right corner and it is auto filled. Okay, so step one is done. Now we need to take the sums of these. So let's do it down here. Equals the sum and I'm just separating this from the column so that I don't confuse it for another score. I'm just gonna drag this all the way across. Okay. Now we need to set the sum of the product of the deviations above the square root of the sum of the X and Y squared deviations multiplied by each other. So that will look like this equals sum of the product of the X and Y deviations divided by the square root SQRT open parentheses of the sum of the squared X deviations times the sum of the squared Y deviations close the brackets hit enter and we have a negative 0.838 correlation coefficient so this is a strong negative correlation or an inverse relationship between our X and Y variables, which are sprint and jump height. 
So theoretically, this makes sense. And we always want our R values to pass the logic test, right? So if we know anything about the variables going in, then it's best to check them against what our assumptions are. And you know, sometimes it will throw your assumptions for a loop, um, but if you've calculated it wrong, then hopefully your logical assumptions will, will lead you to say, oh, that's not right. Uh, that should be probably a, a larger correlation or a negative correlation or a positive correlation. And then you can just double check. And if you get the same result again, well, then you're doing it right. And it's just that your data doesn't support your original hypothesis, but in this case it does. So we get a value of negative 0.84, which is a strong negative correlation. And if we graph these two variables, uh, we'll probably see that there's that descending slope and all of the points are fairly close to the line. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. We'll highlight it and insert the scatter plot. And yeah, look at that. So we're not going to do it right now, but if we were to adjust this, we would see if we were to adjust the axes, we would see this nice uh, descending line right now. They look like they're kind of clustered, but if I if I fit it with a line of best fit, let's go ahead and do that. Add chart element, trend line, linear. Yeah, look at that trend line. And if we even also add the, let's see if we, I think we double click this. And we can display R squared. R squared is 0.73. And this is the coefficient of determination. So uh, R squared is just R squared. So it's the correlation coefficient, lowercase r, and you square it. So if we were to square what we just got equals this squared, then look at that, 0 0.703, okay? So we've calculated it by hand. We've done a correlation by hand, but you can see it's fairly complex and, and complicated. So let's go to number two, which is the easier of of the two of the three ways. Well, there's two easy ways and one hard way. We did the hard way. Now it's an easy way. So I'm actually going to construct a little correlation table right here. Okay. And so essentially I typed in uh, one because the 30 meter sprint should correlate uh, with itself perfectly, right? And same thing with jump height and jump height and peak force and peak force. And we will put our correlations right in this bottom right triangle or bottom left triangle rather. So first between jump height and 30 meter sprint time, we'll type in equals and then corral open parentheses and we'll grab both of those arrays of data separated by a column and just type in enter. And look, there's our negative 0.838 and that was very quick. We didn't have to do all that other work that we did previously for peak force and 30 meter sprint. Same thing, grab peak force. And note, it doesn't matter the order that you input these variables. You could put peak force first or 30 meter sprint time first, it doesn't really matter. Okay, and just as we predicted, there is a negative correlation between the sprint times and the jump height and the peak force. But now let's see between jump height, uh, between jump height and peak force themselves with each other. So, corel open parentheses, jump height, and peak force. Hit enter, and it's a um, moderate to strong positive correlation, depending on whose definitions you go by. What is considered moderate or strong or very strong? Okay, and so there is our correlation matrix. The awesome thing is Excel has an even easier way to do this. So this is the third way, and this is the easiest way using the data analysis tool pack. So in this case, I don't have to do any calculations or even type in that formula over and over again for correlations. I can just go to data and then data analysis and click on correlation. Oh, and look, I, I was doing this beforehand. I already have it all in there, but let me delete it so I can show you how to do it again. All right, so the input range, that's the first thing we wanna do. So we click that little box and we can grab the whole thing, even the variable headings. And there we go. And we'll tell Excel that our labels are in the first row there. And then for the output range, this is really just where we want Excel to spit out 
a correlation matrix. Let's do it under the one that we created right there and click OK. And look at that, a nicely formatted correlation matrix. And it looks exactly the same as the one that we calculated, which is awesome because it means we did it correctly, but also that this is a very easy, you know, five clicks and then you have your correlation matrix. And the cool thing is that even if you had 30 variables instead of just three, it's just a few clicks away from creating this huge expansive correlation matrix. So those are the three ways of creating correlations in Excel, the hard way by hand, and then the two easy ways using the formula and the analysis tool pack. If you guys missed it, I already did a video showing how to interpret the uh, Pearson R correlation coefficient. So check that out if you haven't already. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments or if you'd like me to do any other statistics or sports science tutorials. And in the next video, I'll be showing you how to run correlations in SPSS. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys on the next video.